Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Brewery View Crew. I'm Ron. And I'm Corey, and we're here with special guest. Chris Quinn. Yes, okay, so if you guys uh, don't know who Chris Quinn is, he is the owner of a craft beer uh, bottle shop in Chicago, and also the host of his own video podcast, which is actually kind of the whole reason I even got into craft beer. I found you on wow. iTunes and uh, I watched an episode and I went out to my local bottle shop and picked up what you had been reviewing. And uh, then I just subscribed, been watching and decided that it'd be fun for us to kind of emulate your process. Wow, that's awesome. So that's it's really, really cool. cool for us to be here with you. Today we're gonna have uh, something really cool. Uh, we are going to be talking about how to train your palate to detect different flavors and your nose to detect different aromas in craft beer. Glub, 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 glub. One of the things when you're drinking craft beers, it's not just the beer itself, it's really the experience as a whole, you know, getting all those aromas, getting the flavors, getting the mouthfeel. And sometimes it's hard to, you know, pick out the exact notes that you're getting and train yourself to, you know, get the flavors that the brewer actually tried to put into the beer. So we have Chris here to try and help us out, give us a little tip, and uh, tell you guys how to figure out what's in your beer. Cool. Uh, well, basically, the first thing to remember when you're kind of in trying to enjoy a beer and pull things out of it is it's just beer, you're drinking it for fun. Mm -hmm certainly not something to stress about and it's not something that you need to be trying to mimic how someone else does it. Mm -hmm. I'm most impressed when people come up with their own vocabulary. Uh, if something smells like one of those pink you know rubber balls that you used to have as a kid <laughs> yeah. and that's what you say it smells like a pink rubber ball like everybody kind of visualizes right. that and, and some people may know what it smells like and I think that's much better than you know, saying it's got some sort of, you know, I don't know, some convoluted mm -hmm. wine terminology yeah. to it. So just be yourself, and if it smells like X, say that's what it smells like. Don't try to uh, be something you're not. And then, you know, as you get into more formal judging and stuff like that, you can start using commonly understood terminology. And if, you know, everyone in the world knows, in the wine world knows that, you know, minerality really means, you know, pink bouncy ball, then you can use minerality <laughs> in that case. Yeah. So, But anyway, uh, the when you're, should I pour all three of you guys? Yeah, sure. sure. All right. So the first thing you do when you're judging a beer uh, or just kind of, not even judging, just looking at a beer and trying to kind of determine what you think about it and what's going on with it is to take a look at it. Uh, the first thing I usually do is just look at it hold it up, see if it's how clear it is, what color it is, what color the foam is, if the foam, foam is sticking around at all. Um, you know, it's not something I put a ton of importance on, mm -hmm. but it is still somewhat important to look at a beer. Um, there is something to be said that you, at least to some extent, drink with your eyes. And if there's a really brilliantly clear beer with a really nice fluffy head that's just something that's attractive and it yeah. kind of whets your appetite a bit first thing i do is just take a look at it you know i kind of hold it up to some sort of light mm -hmm. and uh just go hmm, okay <laughs> so in this case you know it's uh you know it's a it's a pale golden color yeah. and it's not brilliantly clear it's right. got a little bit of haze to it which often happens with very hoppy beers we're drinking a pretty hopped up pale ale here. So the next thing I do is take a smell of it. Just get your nose right down in there. You can take short breaths. You can take long breaths. I used to like to see the difference between, you know, smelling it with my mouth closed and smelling it with my mouth hmm. open. And you'd be surprised how different it smells. So just huh. try it. Some people like to smell it on different nostrils and all that sort of thing. Don't worry about looking foolish. You're just trying to see what you, you smell. And, and really at this point, just take your time and 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 smell it. Uh, what I like to do is kind of think about what I'm smelling. Uh, you can only smell it once before tasting. And once you taste it, you know, you, you can't get back to that point right. again. So I like to take my time and smell it more than most other people do. Start with the very widest terminology you can think of. Like if it smells green to you or if it smells fruity, mm -hmm. that's fine. Mm -hmm. Smells green and fruity. I mean, at least that conveys something. And then what people do when they get to these really nuanced flavors is, 
when you say something smells green and fruity, say, okay, what kind of green is right. it? Is it green like dried oregano? Is it green like fresh cut grass? Is it, you know, just so, so try to hone it in just a little bit, like green like a vegetable. Well, okay, what kind of mm -hmm. vegetable? And then, but you don't have to do it every time. You just yeah, kind right. of hone it in little by little and it, it takes some time to do. I think one of my favorite, I guess, uh, one of your videos that we were watching again this morning, you were, a, I forget what beer it was now, but you had said, this smells like the greens on a pineapple. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, I don't know that I know what that smells yeah. like. And sometimes when I say those things, I am just kind of imagining, like this is a green pineapple-y smell to it, mm -hmm. and I, I, it's not like I sit and pull the greens off the of pineapples <laughs> and sniff them. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I know what those things smell like, but other times I'm saying it just like, you know, if I had to come up with what a, the greens on a pineapple would smell like, this is kind of what I would think it would be. Yeah. Um, and really, if that helps you understand what you're smelling, then kind of go with it. And that's that's very much what I do too. Cool. You also said something about it smells like the rainforest, and Ron was like, I've never been to the rainforest. And then immediately after you go, I've never been there, but, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but I imagine this is what it smells right, like. Right, exactly. So. Uh, so, I mean, in this case, to me it smells really like floral. Like if I was to go into uh, like a greenhouse and sniff some fresh flowers. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting a little bit of pine too. Mm -hmm. Really those, fresh. The, the resinous piney type, yeah. type aromas that you get from those hops. Yeah, I get a little bit. I, for daisy cutter, I always get a lot of grass, but, mm -hmm. but not the super green grass, like a little bit like almost like dried, like a cross between like hay and, and grass to me. I've smelled this beer a lot, so I, I very much know <laughs> yeah. what this beer smells like. Um, the other thing to think about is um, if you know what hops and malts and yeast smell like, mm -hmm. then try to see, can I smell the hops? Can I smell the malt? Can I smell the yeast? Mm -hmm. If you don't, then start getting a beer that you know has a lot of hops in it and right. smell and say, okay, these are what hops smell like, and then get a very malty, no hop, no yeast character beer. Like a, I always say, like a Doppelbach. Mm -hmm. Get a German Doppelbach and smell it, and you're like, okay, this is what malt smells right. like. Or a stout, oftentimes. That's what roasted uh, malt smell like. Um, and then gets anything from Belgium, basically. And you're like, okay, this is what Belgian yeast smells yeah. like. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. And then you'll start to be able to pick out, you know, subtle characteristics as well. I mean, it's just tasting, tasting, tasting. Mm -hmm. Do you find that, like, doing, I don't know, I guess as teachers, homework benefits like like beer reading, like tasting beer, uh, books like that. Do you find that that gives you real world application or is that more just something to kind of like build on? I think it gives you a little bit both. I've found that the really good beer books I've read and then come back to at a different point of experience for myself and then be able to pick up you know, additional things that I might not have understood before or might have read but not understood really what, what they were going for. Mm -hmm. And you knew read it again later on. And I, I think the best beer books to me are almost like reference books. Like yeah. I still go back to tasting beer. Um, I still go back to a lot of Michael Jackson stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, it can be just something you read for entertainment and then kind of if you pick one or two things out, uh, and take them with you, that's fine. And then just kind of go back to them and, uh, you know, read them again. Now, I mean, in the position you're in where you have done professional judging mm -hmm. and you own your own store and this is your life, can you ever turn it off? Can you ever just sit back and throw one back without thinking about all the things you're getting? Yes. Uh, and I found, and a lot of uh, people in the beer industry and a lot of brewers, I found when they're all done, they just want something that they don't need to think about. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of brewers I've spoken to on the West Coast, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale mm -hmm. is their go-to. Mm -hmm. It's nice. It's going to be perfectly made every time. Mm -hmm. You don't have to think about it, and it's enjoyable. Here, I know a lot of people really like like Alpha King mm -hmm. out here or a good Pilsner, something like that. Yeah. Something that's enjoyable and tastes really good but is also kind of beautiful in its simplicity at the same time right. too. Um, I have noticed the more I smell it, the more I'm getting some like fruit 
flavors mm-hmm. coming out of it. I've noticed one as beer warms up and, and one as you get used to the primary smell, you know, you start to see getting like secondary tertiary right. smells to it as well. Yeah. It smells so, really, really good. Yeah. So yeah, we haven't even tasted it yet. So <laughs> then the next thing to do is taste. So cheers, cheers guys. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, clang, clang. Yeah. <laughs> The first thing I do when I'm tasting is I take a, a pretty small sip at first and I kind of swish it around my mouth and, and just kind of see what the different parts of... I, I like to get it everywhere just to mm-hmm. see what it tastes like. Sometimes even like up around here you can get like an astringency, like a drying quality to yeah. it. Um, I like to kind of breathe sometimes in and out like just to see you know if some of those aromas kind of get up into your nose. Yeah. Um, and I think about the experience of from the beginning, like the first time, what's the first flavor that I notice, and then kind of how does the beer progress. And I think the best beers will kind of evolve in your mouth. Um, The best or the most complex beers, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, So in this case, for me, the first thing I get, you know, is those big aroma, late edition hops from it. Right. Very, uh, and then I'm thinking, okay, what, what next? Then it kind of like it, it tames down. I mean, it's got a very mild malt mm-hmm. quality to it. There's no, so you just start ticking things off. Is yeah. there sweetness? Not really. Yeah. Very dry beer. Mm-hmm. And then, what am I now that I'm finished with the beer? What am I tasting? All right, I still have that hoppy flavor. I don't really have any malt mm-hmm. character, and there's pretty aggressive bitterness. Yeah. Like yeah. right now, bitterness is what I'm tasting yeah. the most of. So to me, this beer. Starts out really hoppy, kind of dies down, and then finishes just with like a, a burst of bitterness to it. Um, pretty drinkable. Yeah. Um, to me, sometimes I feel this beer is a bit dry for me. Yeah. Um, I'd want a little bit more malt body to it, but certainly on a nice hot day, mm-hmm. something like this goes down very nice. It's something I've always noticed with Daisy Cutter is that the aroma is just so huge. I mean, it's one of the, right. one of the bigger pale ale aromas you'll get, but the I almost say the hot flavor is not really as big as the aroma. You know, yeah. the bitterness lingers, like you said, but it's not. Um, it's not going to have big tropical fruits or anything like that. Right. Like you would, or grassiness that you get on the nose. So yeah. So it was kind of an interesting comparison between the two aroma and yeah. flavor. You know, when you're done, and it's not in your mouth anymore, just kind of see what what it's like. You mm-hmm. know, what what am I tasting right now? And and the real, th- I, I think the key to it is just think about what you're you're tasting. And Randy Mosher, who wrote Tasting mm-hmm. Beer, I was talking with him and, and he said, mm-hmm. you know, the part of your brain that controls language and the part of your brain that controls, you know, flavor and aroma are in completely different parts of your brain. They're not really connected. And that's why it's so difficult to come up with mm-hmm. what word is this smell? Yeah. Right. They're not really supposed to have a one-to-one relationship. Yeah, so that's why it's so difficult to express what you're tasting, and that's why it it takes work. That's a great point, because there's be so many times we'll be shooting an episode, and we have to like pause <laughs> and really like take ten minutes yeah. to really what is that flavor? Right. Like I know what it is, but I can't verbalize it. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and it's that's that's common. I mean, that's yeah. what it's supposed to be. I mean, it's not supposed to work that way. Um, I mean what does a color smell like? I mean, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. We say that we've just made up things that green smells like, you know, things that taste green or something like that. But yeah, it's, it's kind of just something we've made up, which is why it's important to just say whatever it smells like to you. And if you can't hone in on exactly, just kind of come up with something general. Like I said at the beginning, it's just beer. Yeah. You know, something (laughs) to be enjoyed. Yeah. And if you enjoy kind of just, really wringing everything out of it uh that's then go for it Mm -hmm. Um, that's a great point i wanted to ask you about how to detect off flavors in your beers i mean yeah sometimes you get a beer like you you know you like to have the freshest beers possible if you get an old one how do you know it's too old how do you know this beer went from perfect to bad that's a good Um, question yeah experience it's experience and uh either i mean if you really want to get into it you could buy like off flavor spiking kits Mm -hmm. More realistically, what you have to do is be drinking with somebody, either have read something and say, hey, this is that, Mm -hmm. or have someone say, oh, man, this is completely oxidized. This is completely skunked. Right. And then you say, oh, let me, yeah, let me see that. Yeah. Uh, That's, that's how I learned like the basics of like what yeast smelled like. Gotcha. You know, I would be sitting there 
and I th- it was with Unibrew. I would be drinking Unibrew, and this was, I remember I'd been reading about it uh, later after I tasted it, and they were talking about the Unibrew yeast character. And I was like, oh, that's that smell that's in all their beers. I didn't mm. know what it was. It's their yeast. And it, it just is, there's no real quick way to do it. Going to a class would be probably be the fastest way, but I think you kind of even need to work up to right. that. Why are you going to work on all these obscure off flavors when you don't know what malt smells like? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what's the point? <clears throat> Makes sense. Yeah. The last thing I wanted to, to comment on was I was I was saying I need to take a small sip. I think it's also with beers like this just as important to just take a big kind of a gulp might be an overstatement, but just take mm-hmm. a, a you know a nice full taste of it as well because that's the way that a lot of these beers are meant to be drunk i mean especially yeah. like a, a pale or a pilsner you're not going to take tiny little sips right. of it like it's a barley wine mm-hmm. you want to see what that beer is like when you're you know taking a couple you know gulps of it at, at once like you would on when you just want to have it because that's really how that beer is meant to be mm-hmm. drunk it's not meant to be you know poured and looked at and analyzed yeah. and there's things you can extract from it but mm-hmm. really the beer is made to be enjoyed so enjoy it and see if that process is also you know, enjoyable thank you for kind of letting us in on how you kind of analyze your drinks and what some beginners and even people like us who are you know somewhere in the middle yeah. uh <laughs> get better at it and you're right it really all is just about having fun drinking your beer and uh great advice cool thanks a lot yeah thanks guys it was awesome cheers hey guys like that review click on the video for our previous episode you want to check out your favorite beer by the style click on the logo in the top left corner don't forget to like us on facebook follow us on twitter and subscribe to us on youtube cheers